is no buttons. We, we dismiss the buttons. There's no need for buttons. These are touch devices, mm -hmm. and touch devices are handled through gestures. And mm -hmm. I think in this, in this, in this context of, of touch, buttons are actually a distraction. They're not better than gestures. They're very confusing, in fact. It's very hard to distinguish between a row of buttons that are in the bottom. Uh, if I want to switch uh, or go back or go to home, and they all look kind of like the same and they're in the same position, there's a good, good likelihood I'm going to mistake them. Whereas you don't mistake between your right and your left, your top and your bottom. So we're using the edges to allow off all that interactions to take place. And the mental model is much clearer, right? Right, left, top top down it's easier to understand it it's it's faster to, to, to perform and you can do that in the dark as well not even looking at the device so I can actually swing the device and know that I can switch like do this and that result in one one manipulation um, the other thing is we're bringing a, a, a full stack a full converge operating system that means that for example on the tablet we have a multi-user experience that is secure and encrypted we also have the same capability on the phone, but we believe that the phone mostly is used as a personal device, so by default it doesn't come with this configuration. But still, uh, we, this is an innovation that we bring into this market. True, secure, encrypted accounts that is very critical for enterprises. Uh, everyone running uh, uh, phones in, in, in an enterprise context, they're actually looking to be able to uh, plug it into the organization IT, and that security level is currently and absent in the market, people are looking for that. So as you see, it's, it's very beautiful and responsive, the interaction itself. You can see it's like an interesting note here that's called the, the infographics, basically representing your activity on the device, what you do in your different aspects of the device, kind of see messages, communications, physical activity and so on. For example, this woman just walked three kilometers. And let's, let's, let's do some gestures. So I wanna go directly to home. I can actually launch my uh, application, launch my uh, launcher here for the, for an edge swipe from the left, just like that, and go directly to home, mm -hmm. right? I can do the same thing on the phone, just go directly to home. Mm -hmm. so, so through this kind of idea here, I can show you how fast and fluid it becomes later on, but, but the idea here is that you don't need to go to home every, every time you want to start uh, an application. You can just bring it in from the left and just jump directly at it. You manage it. You control it, you put whatever you put, wherever your location you put, so that becomes your, your main quick, fast switching uh, mechanism. Now, the home screen is another innovation. Our home screen is all about content, it's not about applications. So we think that um, when, you, when you have a home screen that is full of application buttons, that means that you always need to go to some application to find some content. In fact, the focus people have is about people, it's about music and it's about videos. So we bring that to the content. The user can determine what's the mix, what does he want to see. We provide the sources. Uh, we have currently a few hundred sources available for the user to actually choose on our desktop and that's actually coming to touch devices. So this is a nice example, the people screen. The nice thing about it, Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, all stream down to the, to the, to the home screen and that becomes your social hub. You don't need to go to this application to say what I say, for example, what Ivanka has been doing here. I just look into her uh, person preview and I get all her contact details and I get all her up to, uh, status updates from, from Facebook, her latest tweets, her Flickr, uh, uh, her Flickr up, uh, upload and so on. Same goes for music. We have a music uh, screen and of course we have an application screen and a video screen. Um, so I'm just going to show you something about the application. Right? We are obviously bring you content from different sources, right? Mm -hmm. So we have your own content, but also content that you don't own and you might be interested in. This is really nice, because like, think about that. I'm searching for a movie, right? Let's say I'm searching for this, um, this movie, Silver Linings. And Silver Linings is not something I have, and I don't know who actually sell it. Maybe multiple services sell it. Maybe it's on Hulu, maybe it's on Netflix, maybe it's on Amazon, maybe it's on all of those, and I want to know who sells it for the cheapest price, right? We show it to you directly from the home screen, because if you want to see Silver Linings, you don't really care who sell it, you just want to see it. Search for it on the home screen, you get an aggregated result, from, and there you go. I can choose where I want to download it, where I want to start watching the movie from. So I just want to show you a little bit about the Edge story and how fast that's the, a big innovation we're bringing. Think this is the on, on Ubuntu for phone and Ubuntu for tablet. You have the best multitasking that you, you you can actually imagine on mobile devices right now. Let me show you why. Let's say I'm watching a movie. If I want to change, say, settings on a movie, I don't need to go out of the application to do that. Just swipe from the top, and there I go. I have access to my system setting. Let's change the brightness. 
It's just happening just like that while I'm watching the movie. They need to go anywhere, they need to stop. You can see here that I have multiple other menus that are possible, and we have like a time and date. This is a, 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 a small selection of what's coming in the future. If I want to check my messages, they're just here. I can just interact with them. I can answer in line, put it back. I'm still writing the movie. The bottom edge, that belongs to the application. I can just control the application from bringing it bringing the control through a swipe in the bottom and I can dismiss it back so that's another that's the mental model here <coughs> Swipe from the bottom always take it to the application control now we talked a little bit about uh, application switching that's really good and, and is really fast on Ubuntu I want to show you how fast it is in fact we call it fast and fluid and let me show you why is that fast and fluid so I can actually just bring that launcher from the left with a swoop of my thumb just like that right and being able to leave your finger on that device and do this thing give you a sense that you're actually flying the device. You're just like this. Uh, you, 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 you drive it with your fingers. So we call it fast and fluid. You have, right? uh, sorry, hold the application. Sorry? Every application is... Uh, can uh, be you you, you control this. You'll be able to put whatever application you're interested in okay. and all the running applications will be all that by default. So essentially, this is the user to determine what will be here. So it's not just the operating system telling you if you, if you actually have preference for other application, you can set it up the way you want, you can reorder them so you actually fit the, the, your kind of like position so you can just learn the positions and go to your application. Let's say I want to launch the browser, just launch the browser. While the browser loads, I can want to show you that if I want to actually go for something that is not on that launcher, I can just swipe a bit more from the left to the right and there I go. I got into my application screen on the home. How do I go back to my application? Swipe from the right. Swipe from the left all the way, take me to the application screen, swipe back from the right, take me back to where I was. So what's the mental model here? New applications, launching new applications come from the left, I can swipe to the home screen if it's not on the launcher, going back to where I was from the right. Simple, nobody will confuse that, it's not like buttons, they're not, they're two different sides of the device. It's fast and fluid to do it, look how I do it with my thumbs. That's why we think this is the best multitasking this is the best multitasking that you have out there. Now I want to show you another cool feature that that's actually happening on the phone. I want to show you how that happens on the phone. Let's say I want to launch the browser. I can go to the home screen just like that, go back to the browser, go back to the home, go back to the browser. Now if I want to switch application, I also can continue going back into the stack of application, like a card deck essentially, just like swiping from the right edge. And that will basically keep switching between those applications and bringing the, the next one in line. So shuffling the cards. Super slick and super fast. It's really like nice and smooth how you actually kind of move between them. Flip between the deck of cards. So we talked about the fact that it's a converged operating system and the final bit of multitasking that is amazing on the Ubuntu phone and tablet is what we call the side stage going to the home screen of, 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 of Ubuntu and the side stage is this ability to run phone application on the tablet it's really nice there you go I just brought in Facebook and it's running on the side I can just get update of what's happening in Facebook if I want I can just dismiss it just like that why is that useful because you can be much more productive apart from just checking in on Facebook you can actually create content this way very easy you can manage content you move it between application very beautifully let me show you how's that done let's say I'm on the Let's say I'm on the browser and want to kind of save some information I found on the web that's nice. I'm buying a new phone maybe. And I found this awesome new phone on the web. I just copy that thing into this thing, just like that, super fast, super easy. And this principle can work on any application, right? You can imagine that you're on an email and you want to check on the map. You're on Facebook and you watch a movie. Everything can actually happen in tandem and you don't need to leave what you're doing to just do something on the side, something that's useful on the side. Can it be controlled by the developer, for example? Uh, a developer it can be controlled can by the user, but um, it depends on the developers how much they interface with this kind of framework. So we leave it to this kind of, uh, we, we leave it to whatever makes sense for the application, right? Some application, for example, let's launch um, the calculator. It doesn't make sense for the calculator to be more big than that, it's waste. So it's probably going to be only running as a phone application, just like that. Right? But some other application, let's say the Facebook application, somebody might want to watch it in the big screen. Right? So you'll be able to 
drag and drop it, the, just like that, the, into the, the beacon. Best feature. For example, I developed an application that uh, shows uh, the you know, previews of uh, some films. Right. Can the films be copy and paste uh, by default, or I, can I, for example, disable the, the copy and paste feature? Or at least the picture of a uh, Right, preview. so I, it's a very particular question, but it has to do with the application and the framework, like what makes sense for that application. So not all copy, not all application would make sense for them to have copy paste. But if you say you're writing an email and you want to drop in a picture from gallery into the email, you just bring in gallery in the side, right? Like, see if I show you gallery running here. This is gallery. If you want to actually, if you want to drop an image, like say that's running here on the side stage, you want to drop it just here onto yeah, the email. Just drag and drop it over here, right? So it has to do with the application and the context. Sometimes it will work, sometimes not. But it's not just about copy paste. It's about many other things. Yeah. It's about exchange of content, but it's also about sharing. It's also about anything else that might be possible. I want to show you one last feature. That's probably what what you saw before. Uh, that's it's super cool. And it's the ability to do productivity on a, on a phone and tablet, the kind of productivity you have on a desktop. Um, let's say I want to do some image manipulation. Let's say I think this image is actually the colors are incorrect in this image. And then obviously I can add that specific feature to, to, to the tablet. Maybe I can also do it on the phone, even though there's much less space. So there's a limitation of how much functionality I can put on phones and tablet right now. And that's, that's, that's actually making those devices less useful. Like we, we still need a computer, because if you want to do something really productive, not all of us, but some of us, and sometimes everyone needs to do something productive, we can't do it on the tablet. So how do we how do we enable that, right? How do we make it more productive? We all can always make it into a desktop, and that's what we're actually thinking of. So phone, tablet, desktop converge into one device. But you can also do some of this productivity on a, on a tablet or on a touch device. Let me show you how. Let's say I want to I wanna change or crop that image. Launching that interface that we call the HUD, I can actually search for commands in real time, bring them into the application instead of having them always on the UI. So that makes for unlimited amount of functionality that you can interface into applications. So I can crop that image. I want to change the colors. I'm going to search here for color. There you go, color balance. And I can actually change the saturations, contrast, brightness, whatever. And this is just an example of one widget, right? I changed this, up, this picture right now. But in fact, I can plug in here any functionality I would like to do. This is a, this is a method of actually how you kind of create applications that have large functionality without cluttering the UI. It's also a very interesting way to think of uh, applications as, as features in the context of other applications. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I'm going to give you a nice example. Say I'm, I'm writing an email and I want to uh, attach a picture to that email and I discover that the picture is not correct. I want to crop it because I want to send a portion of that picture. I don't need to leave the email, go to the gallery, do the manipulation, go back to the email, and then attach the picture. I can do it from within the email. I can just say, crop the image, and then the gallery application would say, oh yeah, I can use that little thing, the hard thing. I can give you the crop feature in that context right now. I don't need to go to gallery to do that. So this is the hard, and that's the fifth reason why we think we're innovative. We think it's because we have um, multi-user experience. We kill the buttons. We have content on the home screen, multitasking like never seen before, and desktop productivity via the hand. These are the five reasons.